everybody, welcome to number 27. I'm Jack and today I have the fantastic opportunity of comparing an MX-5 and the car that inspired it, a Lotus Elan. Now, of course, the philosophy behind the MX-5 is very much taken from the Elan and it is that of prioritizing lightness over power. But there are three distinct areas in which they are very, very different. That is price, performance and usability. The Elan was launched in 1962 and it absolutely revolutionized the thinking behind sports cars. Instead of going for something with lots of power, lots of weight, lots of width, Colin Chapman decided that the way forward was to make something really simple, really small and really light. Not just that, but the mechanicals behind these cars were really way ahead of their time. So in an era where most sports cars, MGBs, had live rear axles, this had independent suspension all round. It also weighed an incredible 700 kilos and with the Lotus engine, which was a Ford block with a special head designed by Lotus, they put out between 105 to 126 horsepower in the various itinerations. I think the Elan ran until 1973. And that gave it a power to weight ratio, even in the early cars that had maybe 110 horsepower of 150 horsepower per tonne, which is pretty handy even by today's standards. Now, one of the points in which it does start to differ quite markedly in philosophy from the MX-5 is in price. This was actually designed as a performance car for the time. The Sprint version with 126 horsepower was quicker 0 to 60 than a Lamborghini Miura and the price was pretty salty as well. And the land cost £2,100 at launch, which was a good £600 more than the equivalent Triumph. The MX-5 was launched in 1989, and in many ways it is very similar to the Elan. It has a steel backbone chassis, it has all independent suspension. The MX-5, however, does have double wishbone all round, whereas the Elan had wishbones at the front, but the Chapman strut at the rear. They were both also designed to be as light as possible. Obviously, this is going to be heavier than the Elan. These weigh 960 kilos, which is still commendable, but with modern standards of safety, and comfort, it was never going to be possible to match a fiberglass Elan on that side of things. But this brings me to the other area where the MX-5 in concept is so much different to the Elan, and that is usability. It was designed to be an everyday car, despite the fact that it was a roadster. So in that way, it was gonna be completely different to all the British cars, the MGBs, all that kind of stuff that came about in the 70s. If we talk about pricing as well, when released, the MX-5 was just £14,000, which in today's money is about £31,000. So it was designed to be an accessible and cheap car, very much in contrast with the Elan. And in terms of performance, the figures would have you believe that they are quite similar. So a standard early MX-5 with about 110, 115 horsepower, compared to an Elan at the time, which had 105 horsepower, get roughly very similar 0 to 60 in top speed figures. But the power to weight ratio tells you a different story. Even one of the earlier lands had close to 150 horsepower per tonne, whereas the first MX-5s only had 115, 120 horsepower per tonne. So the Elan had a bigger focus on performance. All right, let's take out the old car first and see how it drives. It's absolutely tiny in here, and even just switching the car on like this, the throttle is so immediate, it is unreal. Now this car is on two Makunis, so it's been modified slightly, um, but it's not a big valve engine, so I assume it's probably gonna be putting out about 140 horsepower. Clutch is very short on travel, and but it's actually pretty progressive. It's, it's got a little bit of weight to it, but I think it helps to modulate it. I feel completely at home in this car. It's so small, it's so tiny, but it just, I don't know, there's something so right about it already. It's been a sort of a lifelong ambition of mine to drive one of these, so I'm just so excited. Now. owns this car told me rev it to about eight and a half not eight and a half. 
six and a half, which is what I've just done. And the steering is so immediate. And the driving position, these seats are absolutely spot on, the way they sort of hold you in without having big side bolsters. Oh my God, I've never driven anything quite like this. I think uh, in, in third, put your foot down at 35, 3,000 revs, starts to pick up around three and a half, four, hardens up. It's so sensitive off center, it's just unbelievable. Driving this car, it's almost the throttle is incredibly light. The brakes are super progressive and actually they're good. There's quite a lot of travel at the lever, but they work really well. And you literally have to think where it's going and it goes. So it's that responsive. sort of responds to controls which is what is unrivaled and it is quick in the bends as well that has to be just it's incredible lightweight and that little gear change is so perfect and everything to do with the drive is laid out absolutely perfectly you have the gear lever there just next to the steering wheel the steering wheel is in exactly the right place with exactly the right amount of reach. Legs are a little bit scrunched up, but not so that it sort of gets too much in the way of the drive. It is an absolutely incredible thing to drive, it really is. It makes a very nice little noise for a four-cylinder. the TTR suspension setup which I believe is a sort of fast road very light track day setup and it works absolutely brilliantly it's really good over the bumps I mean the ride is incredible um, for uh, the bigger bumps unsettle it a little bit but over the little stuff it literally just floats the rapid pull just because it's fun. Very long first gear. And then the other gears are stacked very close together. It's almost worth doing it simply, <laughs> simply for running up and down the gears because that gear change is so perfect. It's not just the way it feels, it's the way it feels when it engages as well. It's just awesome. Brilliant, I could change gear all day. It's odd because the driving experience is tight, but the car is not. So obviously the build quality isn't good. You know, everything is sort of done just to get the car going, so to speak, but with, with the drive in mind, but wow. 
mean, the way it responds to commands, the way it turns, is so pure that there's nothing I've driven which is quite like it. The Elise, which is my favourite car, is incredible. I absolutely love that. And I was thinking that it would probably come closest to the experience that the Elan has, and in some ways it does. I think they both share an innate delicacy, so a lightness of controls and a precision and a daintiness. but this is about as good as a four-cylinder sounds. You can hear a bit of induction and it just keeps pulling all the way to sort of six and a half thousand. It could probably go a bit further but I'm not going to try and rev it any further than that. It's incredible the way it changes direction and you can feel that the back end is sort of getting a bit light. I haven't pushed it beyond that though. It is an absolutely awesome, incredible thing. Wow. Oh my God, the Elan has not let me down. This car has the reputation of being one of the best driver's car in the world. And I absolutely, totally and utterly agree. This is an absolute weapon. I mean, the grip is just incredible uh, for what it is. I mean, I absolutely love it. Wow. It is another, this is an import as well, it is a V-Spec but a 1.6, so the higher powered 1.6. Now after having been in that land, you would think that this is in for a real drubbing, but I don't know. Actually, cover going past, so I'll go the other way from this one. You know what, it sounds good. Definitely is a little slower than that Alan, um, but that's hardly surprising really, I mean in terms of the sort of power to weight ratio figures, plus that one's got Mikuni, so it's 120 horsepower. It's definitely always gonna be a bit quicker. Driving position is really similar. You have a bit more room in here, so it's not quite as incredibly tiny as the Elan. And the interior is nice. So I know a lot of people sort of, they sort of drub on these uh, Mark 1s because the interior is cheap and, and nasty, but really, I don't think it's that bad at all. Absolutely fantastic throttle response from this engine as well. It's very nice and revving up to seven. It wants to be revved, ideally kept between four and a half and seven. And you really can make some good, good progress with it. The brakes are great, pedal is super firm. Now the steering is also very direct, but it certainly can't match. The whole car definitely feels heavier with the Elan, which isn't a great surprise. So it's still nimble, it's still light, um, but the steering just doesn't have that incredible telepathic feel that the Elan has. And that's not a criticism because I don't think I've been in, maybe the Elise is similar but different. But there aren't many other cars that, that have that same sort of feel. Now I think it was uh, Bob Hall in 1979 who was at Motor Trend magazine in the US who first suggested to Mazda's head of development that they should go for a two-seater. And at the time, that was actually an idea which didn't seem to make much sense. The market was tiny. The Brits had sort of dominated it in the 60s and 70s. And in America, legislation for safety looked like it was just going to put a stop to open top cars, so nobody developed them. 
However, by 1989, Mazda bit the bullet and finally delivered the MX-5. And it definitely has a lot of Elan influences. And in the way it drives, although it certainly isn't the same, in ethos, I would agree that there is something very Elan about it. And every time I drive an MX-5, I'm surprised at just how good they are. But don't forget, this car was also made to be reliable and to be driven day in, day out, which is certainly something that can't be said for the Lotus. And you can see that even today, if you look at uh, Polly's car in the passenger compartment, he's got a nice toolbox in there. All that Chris had in this well-used MX-5 was a cup of coffee and his phone charging lead. Now the powered steering on the Mazda and the weight of it and the size of it means that you can't quite match the Elan. The other thing is the Elan is so small that you can you can just take different lines. You can use you can use sort of more of the road than you can in any normal car, including this one. I think the MX-5 is actually 15 centimeters wider. It doesn't sound like a lot, but for a small car, it is. 260 kilos heavier and. The steering can't quite match, well it definitely can't match the Elan. The whole experience doesn't quite match it, but it is no criticism of the MX-5 because, if anything, this is actually easier to drive fast. It just gives you a little bit more of a sense of security and it is still awesomely good. Even a really well used example like this is just awesome. So for example, the gear change has quite a bit of slop in it but it's still nice to use. You know, it's a, obviously the mechanism needs changing, but it still feels good. Now, in terms of outright performance, of course they are very different. Not very different in the way they go. The Elan is quicker, it carries more corner speed, but it's just that if you go back to when the Elan was released, oh my God, that thing was an absolute rocket. Whereas the MX-5, even when it was launched, it was only ever really a brisk car, but it's fine. It is absolutely all you need because it is just incredibly good. Again, driving position is excellent. It's one of these cars that just works around you and the controls are also just right. You know, the weighing on all the controls, which is I think so important if you're really gonna drive a car hard, they're all exactly right. Throttle, brakes, steering, it's just fabulous. It's so predictable. Now this has a standard limited slip, uh, the V-Spec anyway. These 1.6s are really nice and revvy. I think I almost prefer them to the 1.8 in many ways. Now the Mazda, can't match the Lotus in terms of ultimate sort of driver feel, but don't let that fool you because it is absolutely brilliant in its own merit and so much more usable and also much easier to get in and drive hard. The Elan does take a little bit of getting used to this. I think almost anyone can get in and just chuck it down the road and it is, they are just brilliant things these, they really are. Fantastic. Thank you all so much for following and for having watched this video. I've had an awful lot of fun today. Now, if you have an interesting car, something unusual, something modified that you want me to do a video on, then please contact me. Instagram is the best way, the messenger on that. And I really look forward to seeing you for the next one. What a day.